Questions? Hey, what's up, people? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Australia Commentaries. Uh, coming to you live from uh, Hollywood, California. Hollywood adjacent, Yeah, California. next to We're sort of Beverly yeah. Hills, Hollywood adjacent. Don't yeah. dox us live. Don't dox us, Lon. <laughs> They'll find us. Yeah, they're going to come sell us steaks. <laughs> um, that, true story. We'll tell you about that it sometime. Happened once. Um, so we're talking about Indiana Jones 5. Uh, they made five of these things still, and uh, this one's called The Dial of Destiny. Yeah, we're not doing that thing where we're pretending Crystal Skull does not exist. It exists, Oh, it everybody. happened, yeah. We live in the real world. <laughs> it happened, and it's spectacular. No, uh, <laughs> we, um, yeah, we're talking about this movie. We're going to do uh, watching house trailers, start and stop with our thoughts. We're also going to show deleted scenes. We also have uh, a Q&A. If you're watching live, put something in the chat, and we'll respond to it. And... Um, at the end, we'll tease you with next week's Honest Trailer. Sorry, I'm distracted. We've been looking at um, crew, <laughs> vintage crew jackets on uh, eBay, and I've got my eye on this Con Air crew-worn um, uh, bomber jacket. It's $1,600. Uh, so if you want to be a friend of the show, <laughs> buy it and send it to us. It's going then, on our Amazon yeah, wish list, folks. Then we can, uh, we'll can we dox you so you know exactly what address to send it to. Yeah, um, there you go. So yeah, if you You're buy- allowed to come bother us if you buy us a Con Air crew jacket. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Anyways, uh, back to this show. Uh, Indiana Jones 5. Wow, what a disappointment, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I like this movie. I, I, I feel like the action is a step below what you would expect from, from the Spielberg classics. Uh, so on that level, it does not live up to the original trilogy, but I, I I enjoyed I enjoyed this for what it was. I had a good time watching. I thought it was like a you know a middling action blockbuster movie brought down by the fact that I can't help. I'm sorry. I know you don't like you don't want every movie to stand for itself. I can't help but compare this to other Indiana Jones films well, sure. in a negative light yeah, and be it, like, wow, as, this is not as good as all the other ones. There, there's that 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 chase scene through Tangier in particular. I feel like during that sequence, you really notice like this just isn't fun and light on its feet and exciting like a tank chase in Last Crusade would be or a mind cart or ride, right right like Temple of Doom or like whatever Spielberg is just this incredible naturally gifted filmmaker especially when it comes to like an action set piece he just knows exactly how to pace it and where to set everything up and how to do it with personality but yeah, he got and, off to a good start with the with the parade the horse through the moon the moon landing parade yeah or moon day. that was that was okay I was like all right all right Mangold let's see what you got um but and I also was excited for this. It's a little bit of uh, missed expectations because I think no one makes a dad movie like James Mangold. It's true. <laughs> between, King of, King between of modern Logan dad and cinema. Ford v. Ferrari, I was yeah. like, oh, what a great fit. Topland. If, any, if yeah. anyone can make an old man Indiana Jones movie, uh, this is it. And, like, you know, it, it was it's battle-tested because I watched this movie. I didn't see it in theaters, but um, when it came out on uh, whatever, digital, my in-laws were staying with me. And my father-in-law, not a big movie guy, but I'm like, you want to watch a new Indiana Jones movie? And he like, you know, he like stood at attention, yeah, like, like the fedora like came right back <laughs> onto his head. Yeah. So this is definitely a older dad movie. Oh yeah, yeah. But that's, that's why I think it was so surprising, like to open it this summer with all the fanfare of huge tentpole blockbuster. Like this is a dad movie. This this isn't like for everybody four quadrant. I don't feel like people under 30 really give a crap about this I, character. I, I don't think they do. Yeah. You, you had to be there. Yeah, I kind of feel like, like like the last great one that we all loved came out in the late 80s. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, like, you're really, you're talking a big gap. For, for Gen Z, I feel like this may be a bridge too far. And there wasn't even, like, a cartoon or anything. I mean, I'm sure there was, but it, that, that, like, Well, there was Young interest. Indiana Jones Chronicles, sure. of course, yeah. Um, but not like, 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 not like the Ghostbusters cartoon or something, X-Men cartoon, that kept it alive even after it was Yeah, I feel like that, that, that ride is, like, the last a, big thing right. that kept it relevant. And right, right. So, I, you know, for people, like, I went and saw this in the theater with my dad, and it was a big nostalgia thing for me. But, you know, I'm in my I'm in my freaking 40s. Yeah. You know, like, like I feel like for if you're a lot younger than me, this was not the most relevant yeah. thing. And then there's the other el- old wrinkled elephant in the room, which is, like, Harrison Ford's in his fucking 80s. Yeah. And they're making him do action movie stuff. And I know there's no avoiding it because we live in an era of franchises and it needs to keep going forever. But that's easier when you can recast a, or animate. Or it's a cartoon character. Like, you can always have someone else yeah. be fucking uh, Mephisto or whatever, Wolverine. But you can't, like, uh, Indiana Jones is so tied to Harrison Ford. And he's just, he's not an action star anymore. 
I feel like there was a moment probably in like the 90s where you maybe could have explored other ways to move the franchise on where it wasn't so stuck in like it's just about Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones. Like there are all these other like Belloc type archaeologists in this world yeah. so like i mean it certainly spawned a ton of imitators right and like and... their idea about like a helena shaw type character that you would introduce and then could spin off into other like i i get or like a prequel about abner ravenwood or like mm-hmm. all of those things i get how they could work but we've just spent so long now exclusively focused on harrison ford as indiana jones i don't feel like people would accept it at this point I, you know, I, I don't know that Disney took that lesson from Solo that we can never recast these characters. A Harrison Ford character. Yeah, nobody nobody will ever accept another actor as these characters. It, 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 it does mean you kind of have to wrap up these franchises because, like... That's the y- thing. And there's yeah, the how, how long go, is this going to go on? The only way to go story-wise was the old, broke-down man who doesn't, like, who's past his prime and doesn't want to be there anymore. And, like, I'm tired, even though I like The Last Jedi... Uh, I'm tired of seeing, I'm now completely tired of seeing, like, old heroes who hate their life and don't want to yeah, be Yeah, I mean, we're getting it multiple times a summer I'm now. I'm getting it over and over. We already I had was Michael... like, wow, last Jedi, what a, what a bold move, Cotton. But, but like, now it's yeah. like, okay, can we stop we making these old men want to die? We literally also had Michael Keaton doing this same exact <laughs> beat as Batman this summer. Yeah. And it's just like, it's getting, okay. it's getting bleak. It's getting, it's like that same thing with politics. It's like, hey, does anyone under 85 want to run for any of these offices? <laughs> like, what? The boomers are just not letting go. That's why Oz Trail Commentaries is uh, uh, coming out in favor of Vivek Ramaswamy. That's our, <laughs> that's our ch- candidate of choice. RFK Jr. <laughs> and Vivek Jr. <laughs> them together super ticket. We're on it early so that we can get a, a, an appointment, as you know. Yeah, the my, films are. I'm I'm a one issue voter, and that issue is nobody wearing a mask. <laughs> I think nobody uh, over fifty five. That's, um, that's that's my yeah. one policy. But we we have no choice uh, in film or in life. Uh, so stick around. We'll get there. Uh, let's watch. <laughs> let's watch the honest trailer for Indy Five. Yeah, the so D. very tired. <laughs> From the studio who turned Luke and Han into puke and gone, and the director who imagined Wolverine as a broke down shell of his former self, comes Hollywood's latest reminder that time is the great destroyer and we're all marching toward irrelevance and bitter disappointment. Shocking no one showed up for this one, isn't it? Let me die, please. Kill me now. Let me die, please. I am so depressed. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Indiana Pause. Jones is back. Uh, and do you remember? Every- do you remember that? That I think it's a Simpsons joke where they 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 cut to a star or the maybe the critic where it's Star Trek so very tired and they're all like really old in the Enterprise like eh, bridge. To- <laughs> you mean it, Picard? <laughs> no, no, it was yeah. the original. At this okay. point, it was the Shatner Nimoy yeah. cast. Uh, it, it came true. Like that was just a joke, and like we've we've now fully come around to like that is no longer a joke. Literally, the movies are these old movie stars like, like shuffling through their old franchises. Like yeah. ah, I don't want to do. I this mean, this anymore. is now the 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 movie stars of the late seventies to late eighties are now in their seventies and eighties. Yeah, and we're making them put on the suits again. <laughs> yeah, it's just so, it's so weird that we we can't let them go and just have new characters at last. We just refuse. <laughs> no, no. But the yeah. ba- will the barrel ever run dry? Is well, my I mean, question. these guys these these folks are going to die. And and from what we've seen so far, the totally replacing them with AI digital fake deep fake whatever's doesn't seem like it's delighting audiences as much. Not so much. So I, I I don't think they could just keep doing this forever. But I, I mean less like our, uh, keep making Indiana Jones movies, but like the next generation of stars after them, you know, your Johnny Depp's, your uh, other 90s. <laughs> so you're saying, well, we have like, will Vin Diesel be playing will we get old Man <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's inevitable. That's a guarantee, yes. actually. Even if we don't have any from now for another like 20 years, we'll definitely get a Ew. run of like... Old man Riddick, old man Dom. He's Can not going to let that die. Can you imagine the cocktail of hormones they're going to have him on to, to rock a tank top in, yeah. in, in Fast Oh, trip. man. Oh, well, he'll get to Fast XXX, and finally the two streams will merge. Yeah, finally. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Someone get AI to mock that up. Produced by Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, keep going. When hated Crystal Skull's happy ending, he's sad. His wife left him. His students don't want to sleep with him anymore. And oh. he's the only man alive who misses Shia LaBeouf. I told him he was going to die. But when he's visited... <laughs> I do love that uh, um, Mutt has ruined Indiana Jones twice. Yeah. <laughs> Once in Crystal Skull and twice off screen. By dying by, in, in by Vietnam. Dying and also ruining... It, it does also raise, like... Uh, some weirdness uh, when he's finally reunited with um, with Marion at yeah. the end, uh, where she's like, "Do I get the old Indiana Jones back, or like, is the old you back? Are you are you here again?" And it's like, you know, he was sad because your son your died. Kid died. <laughs> yeah, it's like, did you get over Mutt yet? Yeah, like, geez, <laughs> did you man. shake off that one? Oh boy, oh, <laughs> again with this dead child <laughs> of ours. No, we both, yeah, yeah like <laughs> grieve because he explains it as. Well, she, Marion yeah, could her get into over a spiral. It. Right, yeah. yeah. But she was cured off screen like the Hulk. She's fine. <laughs> she learned to contain the mutt rage. If you go back in time, your ex-wife has to take you back. Those are the divorce rules. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is why Elon is working so hard and tirelessly <laughs> cuz he knows <laughs> Keep going. those are the rules. By his beloved goddaughter, whose name never came up before. I'm her godfather. <laughs> Harrison Ford will be whisked off Remember? for one last no. trip around the world of elder abuse. What? Stop! Oh. The man is in his 80s. He belongs in a museum. Uh, pause. You raised a good point that I don't think made it in. Is um, is he immortal now because of the drink from the cup? Un unclear. I mean, I, I had the same question to Chris Skull. Unclear. Yeah. Uh, I, I I think it's that. Uh, it doesn't work once they leave. The, right. Thank I think you, it's Billy. the idea. Is once you cross <laughs> the seal, all bets are off. Okay. That's why the old knight stays inside the 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 rock for me. Got it. But maybe it's like Botox. Like it, it, it like it's still in you, but it wears off gradually. Because he takes a gunshot too. He does you know, get shot and he misses fine. a major artery, but he would bleed. A normal person would bleed out if they're sitting there that long. Very old. So you, would, old. You, would at least, you, would, you wouldn't just like I could shoot an 80 year old in any part of their yeah, body. Yeah, you wouldn't just die. walk it off. <laughs> like an 80 year old, if you like step the wrong way, you're like, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, come on. This is crazy. All right. Anyways. <laughs> Keep going. Waller Bridge joins the franchise as Helena Shaw, a real Disney executive type. The only thing worth believing in ever is cash. She's charming and seductive, presumably. Take the other character's word for it. Come here. I'm going to show you something. Gosh. All right. I thought maybe you returned because you loved me. Who's so clearly set up to be the next Indy. They put a map of Indiana on her forehead. <laughs> She'll spawn with her own boy servant, Teddy. This literal straw hat pirate as Gen Z's answer to Short Round, who's less about put downs and more about putting Nazis down for good. And who learns how to fly from the movie school of bullshit. Hey, good for you, kid. Maybe you'll also win an Oscar in 38 years, and Harrison will be there to. Oh, never mind. So, pause. <laughs> Maybe not. So, Helena and. Um, Teddy. Teddy? You watching that one? It's Disney Plus. I feel like they learned their lesson and they're not going to try this, but a, a generation ago, yeah, we definitely would have. And and you know what? I would I would check it out for two episodes. Sure. It's a two episode <laughs> check. I would out. give it a two episode check out and see see how, you know, you never maybe maybe you'll get a willow and it'll be charming and delightful and then they'll they'll pull it for, yeah. <laughs> forever. Yeah, I was not a fan. And I do love Feely 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 Waller Bridge. <laughs> Phoebe, Phoebe Waller Bridge. Fleabag Waller Bridge. Yes. Yeah. Uh so I, I that character though was like I, I was being told what to feel about her instead of her like showing what I'm supposed to feel. Yeah, about I, I her. thought I thought she was fine. It, it's not a performance issue. It, it's just it's a little like underwritten, and then it's also it's weirdly like they're pretending that these characters were so close and like, well, we ne we this is our fifth Indiana Jones movie. He has never mentioned these people. Yeah. So like, I think you could get away with he knew them back in the day, and we've just never heard about them before. But like. She's like hurt, like he was supposed to be her dad, and it's like, come on, Indiana Jones was not your dad. We've never met you before, lady. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, you could put in a flashback where a girl has the same birthmark, but I'm not sold on it. No. You know? No, they did not. Um, yeah, and just uh, characterization-wise, like I don't know, the, the, it didn't connect with her I, backstory I, and her present story. I feel like they do a little bit, and look, I'm not gonna come in and I don't want to gender this up at all. Mm. But I think that they do come in with a little bit of she's a very accomplished 
capable character like right away. And I think that that does tend to like, it's hard to, it's hard to overcome that when you're like right away. She's like, she solved this thing. It's a little bit like in Ant-Man three where Cassie Lang has just solved the big mystery (laughs) in the first act of the movie. It's like, we don't know this character yet. And she's showing up answering all these questions and challenging everybody. And she's like, so the center of the movie, it almost feels like we should open with her instead of Indy. It's like, it wants mm. to be her story, and she's just shown up. It's like, who are you? I mean, to me, it was less that and more like she had such a – the way she was introduced is like, okay, she's a, a lying, deceiving rogue who will do anything for cash, and, like, she's just doing this. See, I feel like we don't hit she's that – She's a Tomb Raider, We basically. hit that later, but that's more the opening. Like, I would have liked more of that front-loaded. Yeah. I feel like in the very beginning, we get, like, she knows everything about archaeology, and it's like – But it's a con. Yeah, but it's like – it's just not an interesting way to get into her and her world. And I, I it, it, it took me a while into the movie before I was like, oh, I get who this character is now, and yeah. it's more interesting. And you, it seems like a wasted. I mean, we can get into this later or now. Um, which is like the, it's such a weird thing to include this in the movie, but not have it be the core of the movie. Which is like an archaeologist and two people who are obsessed with history but have different views on it to go back in time. Like, what kind of dilemmas does that present for someone like that? And it's just kind of this finale that we can get to. That's like 15 minutes in the past, and it doesn't. It's like, do I stay or do I go? Whereas the idea of an archaeologist going back in time, or two archaeologists going yeah. back in time with the chance to steal things, make things right or wrong, and stuff like that, and to just not explore that when you're like, it's right there for you. But instead, they just yeah. use it for the action finale. It's, it's weird. I feel like there's two things working against them there, which is one, uh, it's a mistake. They, they go to the wrong place. It's not a place they're intending to go or that they have anything to do. You know, like they don't have anything to do once they get there because yeah. they didn't know they were going there. And so I feel like that puts you in a little bit of a storytelling hole where it's like, well, now it's like it's not it was very passive on their part. And then you got a second layer of passivity because it wasn't even their plan. They're dragged along right. by the Nazis for no clear reason like <laughs> mads at one point is like bring him along like why to show why, him <laughs> why would you bring your chief rival in the moment like you giving him an opportunity to stop you well, sure that's like dumb villain movie logic it would be like he, throw him out of the plane right now I, I, <laughs> i'm doing a french accent because uh-huh. i can't really do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> the idea of indiana jones and uh, a, a also capable but different perspective assistant chasing a nazi through history is a cool movie idea. Right. But then I, I feel like you kind of want it to go back to 30s. Like, yeah, you like make a pit point, stop there. At some point, you know, right. It is weird. And, and I'm glad when, they, when I first figured out or when we all figured out that time travel was going to probably be like Dial of Destiny. Yeah. And I, I was really afraid we were going to do – we were going to Back to the Future to it. And mm. it was like going to have to go back to like – memorable moments from previous films and i'm very glad we didn't do that okay but it is weird i think that the whole movie is kind of leading you up to we're going to go back to like pre-world war ii something mess with what happened and then it just ends up not being that at all and it's this totally different tangent yeah like i feel like that work that cuts against them in the third act Mm. because then they're just on this hill in syracuse and it's like we should get out of here. <laughs> I want to stay. It's like, no, oh, this is interesting. Look at that. It's a trireme. <laughs> I hear we get slaves in, the, in this one. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it, it, it feels, it's a little random for the end of your movie. They're just, they don't have right. anything to do once they get there. You never just... seem like a big Greek history buff. No, uh, I guess, never... you know, you get older, you get new interests, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you should be really into World War II. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, well, that's everything we have to say about the movie. Let's fast forward through the rest of this. Sorry. When you've already done Nazis, Colds, Nazis. Nazis and aliens. It's Nazi time again. They're working with Mason, a clueless CIA agent from the shallow end of the deep state. Your associates killed three American civilians and blew up a nationally televised parade. Kleber, who keeps his actor streak going as the most forgettable part of your favorite franchise. The Wolfenstein boss you have to take Mm -hmm. out to get the blue key card. And Voller, Mads Mikkelsen's third magic Nazi. He's more obsessed with World War II than your dad. And this Monday morning Fuhrer back wants to kill Hitler for all the wrong reasons. I saw every mistake, every blunder, and I'm gonna correct them all. I say let him try. He's the only German alive with bad time management skills. 14 BC. Here's a, here's a, let me pitch you an action sequence from my version of Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny. Uh, Voller. Uh, kidnaps the baby Hitler. 
Mm, right. Yeah. And he's running, and th- there's like time portals opening up, and and like he's he's keeps escaping. They're chasing him through time, and he's got the baby Hitler until they're. This is a way where they can hop to different um, action scenes from Indiana Jones past. Yeah. So they're uh, they're in the mine carts chasing him, uh, and they get yeah. the baby. And then he throws it to Helena, I like, and she goes into the uh, the t- um, the Raiders of the Lost Ark, and she's running with the with baby Hitler from the, and then from the giant ball. If the Flash runs faster, we get Hitlers from other cinematic <laughs> universes, yeah. like like down. Downfall Hitler comes nice, in nice over Hitler, here. Yeah. Jewish Hitler. Yeah, like. the producers Hitler, you know. <laughs> Jojo Rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're all there. Yeah, Taika Waititi's Hitler <laughs> pops up. Yeah, I think I like this. Oh, uh, well, missed opportunity. The, the Hitler, the Hitler, Hitler into the Hitlerverse. <laughs> the Hitlerverse. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's keep going. You got the wrong war. Gain a new appreciation for Steven Spielberg yeah. as you watch director James Mangold's cover band version that uses cutting edge tech to make Harrison Ford look like a melting wax figure of himself. Ruins in rubble, the Fuhrer is in hiding. Still can de age that voice though, huh? No. And has him Forrest Gump his way through some decent action set pieces until the ending brings the fabled Dial of Destiny back to ancient Greece so that Archimedes can invent the Dial of Destiny? Wait, not only is that a paradox, but it's another indie movie where the same thing happens if he never does anything. Don't look at it! Keep your eyes shut! Except for a few more dead people, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> My friend was just murdered. So enjoy a film that's Poor remarkably Antonio. similar to your own father. It's familiar. This is going in a museum. Heels. They look like snakes. No, they don't. Where it doesn't matter. Here. Probably on its second marriage, and good for a few short bursts of enthusiasm. <laughs> but talking big picture here has nothing new to offer and just wants to be left alone to relive the past. Hello, Namena. Get on the plane. I'll be all right. Hey, maybe it is time to start coming up with new movie heroes after all. What do you say, boomers? (laughs) Never? Great. Just check it. Never. Never. Starring. Welcome to the past. My bedtime. (laughs) The 40 year old version. Destiny's Child. Tapancito Rapaz. A rocket scientist getting into right-wing politics concerning <laughs> Bad Pit. And my slacks. C-I-E, Dr. Jones, the Toby. other one. No, you're thinking of Aristotle. That's Archimedes, different guy. Puss in boats. That's so Ravenwood. I hate. And Cold Cox. <laughs> I love the evil for it. <laughs> Wrinkled in time. I don't believe in magic, Wombat. What? You witnessed the Ark of the Covenant melt everyone's face. You got brainwashed by the spirit of Kali. You drank from the Holy Grail. Explored an alien spaceship. You believe in magic. Yeah, he should be the the Mulder in their Mul- well, I mean, Mulder Scully pair. Literally the the Ark in Raiders, like the story of that movie is he starts out as this very cynical, he doesn't believe anything is real. He's just purely in it for the glory, fortune yeah. and glory and the, the artifacts or whatever. That by the end of the movie, he's become a true believer. I mean, he should become orthodox religious. At that <laughs> yeah, point. but like by the end of the movie, he recognizes like, oh, there are things in this world we don't understand. You know, like that's the but story. But more specifically, he should be like, the Bible is real. Yeah. And then, <laughs> like, I saw it. And then Temple of Jews is a prequel. Fair enough. But like we keep re- like every new movie, he's still like back to being a cynic yeah. at the beginning. And it's like, you would not still be a skeptic after your your experiences, sir. Oh, he's been hypnotized by the woke mind virus oh, in college, God, yeah. the university. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Concerning. Mm. Um, no, he should be, that should, he definitely believe in magic. Magic at minimum. Um, oh God! A victim the devil. of it. You, you, you would think he would be very religious. Yeah. By now. <laughs> like all that stuff is real. It's hundred percent. It is real. Um, yeah. 
Uh, no fish. <laughs> no, no, I'm Coach R. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he should be like the most serious. Like, what are you doing? It's Saturday. Turn those lights off. It's the Sabbath. <laughs> we don't whip on the Sabbath. Every rule from every religion. It's like all that Just stuff is case, like, yeah. all that stuff is real. Kali, Jehovah. Yeah, all of them. Every, every. It's all real. It's all real. The force. You don't understand everything. He doesn't. Do, I don't think he does his. He doesn't do Finger of Doom in this movie. He doesn't do Han Pointo. He doesn't do yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You find this man. (laughs) He had a mechanical arm. That's a Han thing, though, right? No, because that's that's a fugitive. Okay. Well, that's the the my favorite. Whatever is the the you know you find this man. You find this man. Yeah, that's a Harrison tick. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a Harrison. All right. Well, um, thank you for watching. Going from memory, this is where I say, you know, like and subscribe, click the bell, click the thing. We got a fun, uh, speaking of old people, we have a fun video on Phantom Entertainment now about uh, Hollywood age gap analysis. Ooh. Uh, hot, hot part of the discourse yeah, right now. Yeah, um, everyone loves those May-December romances. Yeah, and uh, um, Harrison Ford uh, tied for the most on-screen romances with a gap of 15 years or more. Sure. Um, so props, props yeah. to Harrison. Good, good job. A tip of well, the fedora to well you, done, my Harrison. gentleman. Well done, Harrison. And, uh, yeah, all all sorts of fun facts like that. Uh, Probably in a link somewhere around here. You know, check out this channel. Uh, We will now go to the Q&A. I've closed my laptop. It's shut. Uh, Billy, if I I open this laptop, will there be questions on it? Yeah, but you have outtakes, too. Oh, and we have outtakes. Oh, Oh, let's roll those first. Let's roll those while while I check this out. Starring A.D. Prof, Hot Priest Time Machine, Gaslight Gatekeep Girl Boss, Hell in a Cell, Tall Round, Boy Meets Ancient World, Let the Reich One In, Hannibal Lecture, How Much a Hedge, Secret Egypt Man, U.S. Agent, Oxford Drama, Oppenprimer, The Last of Zorro, Evil Borat, (laughs) Alan, (laughs) Get Him to the Greek, (laughs) Indiana Jones and the Temple of Gloom, Back to the Fuhrer. Uh, that's good. Man. A history of violence. <laughs> good movie. Hey, remember in the MCU when both of you got to play Nazis together? Being from Europe is fun. <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right. Classic Marvel Nazis. <laughs> Toby Jones. Um, okay, so Benzai 10 uh, starts off. Do we do anything fun with the Webby Award trophy? It's behind me. I think you... Uh, that's can, fun. You can see that that's fun. It's on a shelf. It's on a shelf next <laughs> yeah. to Groot. That's yeah, there fun. Uh, nice. So yeah, that's, that's what you do with a valuable collectible: is you put it on a shelf and you never touch it again. Mm-hmm. Um, you sell it for Con Air vintage Con Air crew, vintage crew, crew jacket money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we should put a big uh, fundraising thing that we yeah, can, like with the with the Con Air airplane that we can raise as it gets closer and closer <laughs> to, <laughs> to to us getting to it. Cyrus yeah. the virus. Yeah. Uh, James asks, with the disappointment of this. Transformers, Mission Impossible, Thor, and so on, are we seeing the end of long-running movie series and franchises? I mean, uh, I think we, we, we are coming out of an era where it was a guarantee. That, that there was a time where if you had a, a hot IP, internet, by the time it was done internationally, you would make your money back basically no matter what, every time or almost every time. Yeah. It was the consistency. And and I think we're we're now officially out of that era where you got to go above and beyond. People are Im- immune to hey, it's a new tent pole. It's got to be like there's a big compelling reason to get you into a theater for this one yeah. specifically. And I think that we're going to. I think the studios are have gotten the message, and we're going to post strikes. Of course, should they ever end, we'll see a transition to I think more of an understanding of that. So I do think we'll have less. Everything is just the eighth installment of this franchise. Well, you say eighth, and the, the, all the ones uh, James brought up, um, Transformers, Mission Impossible, Thor, they're all at, like, uh, and this. It's all five and up. Right. And I yeah. think that, like, maybe there's a reason we usually had trilogies or maybe a yeah. fourth at max. Like, there's just not that much juice in any story orange, I mean, unless think- you are talking about Star Wars writ large or Marvel writ I large, think- but like a actual movie series should yeah. probably only be about three or four movies long. I think ideally you're right, but there was a, we, we're coming out of a period where it legitimately didn't matter. And I mean, a lot of it was just, was was stuff beyond the creative. It was just international box office. Like a lot of new markets were opening up to American films. American films were a huge novelty. I mean, obviously China's the big story, but India is also part of that. Saudi Arabia started accepting international movies just in the last like five or seven years. These are huge huge markets. Yeah. So I think 
There was a while where it— We're not sending our best, folks. It legitimately <laughs> didn't matter. Yeah. Like the sixth or seventh of this famous title that was known all around the world, people just out of curiosity would go see it. And, and that's what has crested and is coming down, along with America. Like it's true of domestic audiences as well. So I think— uh, you know, there was a time where it mattered less and now it matters more again. And everything you're saying is true. Like, like traditionally, yeah, they stopped making big franchises other than horror after like three or four because that's when interest started to sort yeah, of dwindle. Yeah, or the actors are, can't do it anymore. Right, exactly. Um, so, uh, James, this uh, following up with a, a good question I'm giving him to. Uh, had River Phoenix lived, would you be okay with him continuing Indiana? I mean, you can't tell the future or whatever, but yeah, River Phoenix make a great young Indiana Jones yeah, I mean, I'm I'd be fine with another actor giving it a try. Personally, I feel like I'm less I'm less caught up in that stuff than most people. Like, if they did a good job, I'd be fine with a different. I mean, I feel like I, mean, now, I would. Now you're really stretching credulity if he has even more magical encounters as a young man. Well, I was saying to me, it would just be like, well, you would spin off a different archaeologist from this world, like Indiana Jones, especially Raiders, creates this whole world where there's like teams and tons of competing yeah. rival adventurer archaeologists. I mean, Belloc being the most famous one, but there's even that guy who was exploring the cave. He's the temple he's in in the opening of Raiders mm -hmm. before him, who, whose skeleton, I forget the name of the character, whose skeleton is stuck on like one of the booby traps. Like, what was that guy's life before he died in, in yeah. South America? You know, you could spin off any one of those guys. Yep. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Evan writes, what lesser known hero from an 80s film should get a sad modern sequel? I say Jack Forrest from Maniac Cop or the folks from Ooh. Ski School. <laughs> Maniac Cop's a good, a good one. I mean, we were talking about Howard the Duck before the show. I think an old, old, man, old Howard. man Howard would be, that, that'd be great. He, he, That's good. He finally got back to Duck World and then he gets blasted off of it again. Yeah. I mean, I'd love like a, like a Tango and Cash where they're both, Ooh, wow. they're both old. That's great. Yeah. yeah they've been de disbarred from the force. What? Debadged? <laughs> they're ret well, they'd be retired, retired at this point. But yeah, one, one, one last, last Tango case. for one. Or they, they, they retired and formed a detective agency together. Yeah. That's good. There you go. Maybe short circuit. Or they're right. Private detective. They're the two, the, the the number one and number two best private detectives in Los Angeles now. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, Matan asks, uh, will James Mangold still do Star Wars and Swamp Thing after this? Um, I guess he's kind of penciled in for those. He must be up yeah. for those jobs. And I would, st I'm still a, a Mangold man. Um, I just on the strength of Logan and Ford v Ferrari. Um, Copland, 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 maybe yeah. his best movie. Copland's fantastic. So I think that. He's maybe he was just too constrained by you know the the maybe the PG soft PG thirteen demands of this one and the tentpole expectations on it because I think I would totally see his next movie uh, side yeah. on yeah I mean listen the Indiana Jones set piece is a very specific kind of thing yeah. and I mean maybe not everybody's going to have the same sort of facility for putting one together as a Steven Spielberg yeah uh, who invented it literally. Uh, so yeah, I don't I don't think it's like, oh, I'll never like another James Mangold thing again. I, I with Star Wars specifically, like I'll I'll believe it when I see a full trailer. <laughs> like <laughs> full live action trailer with you actual can't just be footage. on rollerblades uh at a at a runway yeah. talking about his dad. No, <laughs> no, I need a full uh, otherwise I'm like, well, that's yeah. probably not going to happen. Like they they promise eight movies for every like actual episode of tv they produce yeah. so we'll see time will tell <laughs> yeah swamp thing too isn't that in is that in turn around is that still happening i feel like with james it's, Gunn, it's been rumored and, and taken with gun saffran i don't know if that's part of their new yeah. their current plans i'm not sure so let them do something else let them make some movie about you know world war ii or some other dad topic, you know, yeah, fi right. fixing Mopar engines. <laughs> yeah, I would say pick it up. We're a, a lot of early racing stuff, so move away from that. But yeah. some other dad topic, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, well, uh, we'll end with this little housekeeping. Uh, Mibbit Maker says, what happened to last week's commentary? <laughs> it seemed mm, like this one question. was going to be missing. Yeah. Great, we took the day off. It was Ferris Bueller's day off situation. But in actuality, I mean, there was like a confluence of like lots of people missing, either on vacation or sick. Uh, and it was what just else hard. was happening, Billy? Billy? I was told you didn't feel well. I also was sick. Yeah, it's my fault. I couldn't come. Billy couldn't come in. Um, I wasn't feeling great, and yeah, so there were a lot of reasons. Excuses. All these a lot of excuses. excuses. But I think I feel like it was thematically appropriate. To, yeah, we to skipped, ditch for we Ferris ditched Bueller. Ferris Bueller. <laughs> Normally, we will be here every week. That is our promise to you, at least when we put out an episode. Uh, I mean, real quick, Ferris Bueller, good movie. Great movie. Uh, really enjoyed it. Enjoyable. Yeah. Fun. Good times. Um, enjoyable to revisit. Yeah, I like John Hughes movies still. Uh, they're fun. 
Um, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> That's your commentary for for uh, now. You got Wheeler. it. Now you feel like and you saw Indiana it. Jones Five. Yeah, the hidden commentary. Uh, next week. Uh, next week's gonna be a big one. Um, next week's gonna be uh, big and beautiful. And box office. Uh, it doesn't have to be beautiful. You're okay? right. It can be whatever it, can be it whatever wants whatever to be. Whatever it wants to be next week. That's your clue. Thanks so much for joining us this week. We'll see you next time on Australia Commentaries. See ya. <laughs>